Okay. Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing. As you know, I'm very much a fan of older IBM computers, and this is going to be one of them that I have never used before. I've used Personal System 2s or the PS2, but never used this particular model, which is the Model 25. It is the all-in-one version of their lowest-end PS2, introduced in August or so of 1987. So the low end of the machines are the Model 25 and also the uh, Model 30, which this one is in horrible shape. That's gonna need some refurbishment. I am planning some videos that are more historical, retrospectives, kind of hardware videos, but I wanted to get the lowest end of the series to compare to the more higher end PS2 models that I already own. But yes, the one we're gonna be looking at today is still new in the box, more or less. Some things have been done to it by the person that I got it from, so I guess it's not new in a box anymore, but it was up until I ordered it. And I know someone's gonna ask, where did you get it from? The company was NYCE Distribution or Distributors, something like that. I saw someone post that they had bought uh, some brand new PS2 machines from them in, I don't know, 2015, 2016, something like that, several years ago. So I jumped on it, you know, you get like a whole complete system for two, three hundred bucks. This one was a little more since it came with some extra goodies that I wanted to check out, but suffice to say, last time I looked, <laughs> they're like asking seven or eight hundred dollars now for the same systems. Because I mean, the supply that they had, I guess, is running lower, and I thought I got a pretty good deal on this one. And one reason for that is because it came with this space-saving keyboard. In fact, let me just go ahead and get to that because uh, I had wanted one of these for a very long time and my refrigerator just came on. Uh, anyway, check this out. This is a IBM Model M SSK, July 29th, 1987. Yeah, man, this is a pretty friggin' desirable buckling spring keyboard. And it's a 10 keyless, you know, smaller layout here, so there's no numpad or anything. And while I do prefer to have a numpad on my everyday kind of systems, I just like collecting Model M's. And this is a pretty major one that I did not have. And I just think it looked great. So yeah, this is new. And yeah, still smells like new. And uh, it's got the cable right here. This is a PS2 cable, which makes sense. But yeah, this was a big reason that I wanted this whole system <laughs> because these on their own today, like, uh, I don't know how much they're going for last time I checked. Something like three or 400 bucks for a good example. I don't know, man, prices fluctuate for SSKs. However, let's go ahead and start unboxing this thing, which, uh, yeah, I don't even remember exactly what it came with. It's been sitting around in my storage for a long time, ready for this video. In fact, the tape has started to come off. And this has the system unit and the monitor because it's an all-in-one uh, computer. It's, it's all together, so there's no separating those, which is kind of appealing to me. I quite like all-in-one units, and this one in particular is not color, it's monochrome, which is doubly interesting to me. I don't have any all-in-ones that are monochrome. Well, I, unless you count like classic Macs. As far as PCs, though, this is the only one, so. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that tape. Hmm, I really don't want to move my camera. So yeah, we're just gonna move over my phone for a second. <laughs> um, yeah, this is what you get on the inside. Uh, this is very similar to a lot of other IBM units that I've uh, unboxed or, well, you know, I've just bought. I haven't unboxed every single one of them on camera, but yeah, check it out. You get the uh, PS2 guide to operations and starter diskette. And then pretty much the rest of it is just going to be the computer itself. So, oh man, okay. Oh, styrofoam noises. All right, got a nice little power cable right there. Well, it's not little, it's substantial, as you'd expect. Oh, there's something else down here. Huh, this PS2 software sampler. Bonus, thanks, Lorenzo. Yeah, Lorenzo's the guy that uh, runs NYCE, or at least he deals with the sales. Oh yeah, check this little thing out. <laughs> oh, that's neat. All right, well, this is interesting. So, get this little stand back here. And it's got these notches and springs. And you can adjust it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the monitor design in general very much reminds me of my uh, PS2 8513 monitor. And check it out. 
That is a lovely machine. I have always just been one to uh, admire this design. Some find the PS2s rather ugly. The PS2 line just has this, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a very, it works kind of aesthetic. So it looks like on the back here, <laughs> we've got a, a question mark, which makes sense. That's usually uh, found on new IBMs. Just to let you know that you're supposed to be able to switch the voltage there to whatever, because they ship these just all around the world. And then uh, right here is where we're gonna be plugging in the power cord. So that's that. And so it looks like we have a serial in parallel. That's about it. That's probably gonna be the SCSI option because that's one of the things that's been done to this before I even got it. Uh, Lorenzo installed SCSI, upgraded it to 640K RAM. I think installed DOS on there. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know exactly. Um, and yeah, we've got some IO there. And uh, what is that? It looks like a quarter inch audio connector. Anyway, we've got PS2 connectors. We'll figure out what that does. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, as far as I know. Again, I will be doing a more involved video on this and the Model 30 in the future, so this might be a little sparse on technical details, but I will be revisiting these. Hey, and it does have a 2.88 megabyte, three and a half inch floppy disk drive. A lot of PS2s did, not all of them did, but this one apparently does. Anyway, let's open these things up. Before we do that, let me get to this huge thing. So yeah, this is the IBM Personal System 2 SCSI storage enclosure. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get this open so you can see what's going on. All right, that's packaged quite nicely. Nice foam there, not styrofoam. So yeah, check it out. This is the IBM 3510 external SCSI enclosure. So you've got your drive which can go right here at the five and a quarter inch bay for hard disks or, you know, whatever else. Nice power button. We've got a key lock there. The key is taped to the top still. And then around back, you've got the spots for plugging it into the computer itself and then terminating the drive. So that's pretty awesome. And a sweet power cable. Mm. All right, so yeah, let's open the guide to operations. I always love doing this whenever I get a new old stock IBM machine. Okay. Cardboard and there we go. I'm going to technical directory and the operations. There's no diskette in here. Mm. Yep, smells new. The personal system 2 model 25 uh, consists of a system unit and keyboard. The system unit contains a processor and memory, a display, and one or two diskette drives. The diskette drive reads data uh, from and records on 720k disks. So I guess this has been upgraded to the 2.88 if it normally took 720 on this model. That's interesting. This is good to know. This, this is stuff that I, you know, I want to know whenever I'm actually going to be doing a more in-depth uh, review retrospective kind of thing. Oh, look at this. I love these kind of illustrations like that. Put the starter disc out in there, which we probably won't have to do since I believe it has already been, uh, you know, had DOS installed to it and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, yeah. And then we have the technical directory. Books, reference materials, and software products for IBM PC products and PS2 products. Ah, uh, here we go. We've got some prices here for manuals. Hardware maintenance, libraries, technical reference manuals. Graphics development toolkit, $556. OS2 graphics development toolkit, $1,155. Cobol 2, $1,010. Ah, that's nice. Fortran 2. $666, same for Pascal Compiler too. That's a nice round number. Oh, hey, there's the diskette. I knew it'd have to be in here somewhere. So yeah, check that out. All right, and this is nice to have. I don't, I don't think I've ever looked through one of these before, uh, at least not the PS2 software sampler. So I'm intrigued to see what this is exactly. All right. Oh yeah. This package contains three, three and a half inch diskettes. Education programs, these United States, Matrix Madness, Electronic Grammar, Algebra Drills, and uh, some productivity stuff, an introductory editor, daily organizer, phone directory, print buffer, PC checkbook, and PC print, as well as entertainment programs, Verso, Solitaire, nice, Freddy's Rescue Roundup, Blackjack, Word Seeking, and Kaleidoscope. This is a lot of stuff. Maybe this was like an extra set of, uh, software that was only available as an option? I don't know. The thing 
from the guy I got it from said bonus. So I'll have to look up and see whether or not this came with the system by default anyway. But I just like these little disc packages. Check it out. <laughs> so I like this here. Note to U.S. government users. Restricted rights legend. Use, duplication, or disclosure is subject to restrictions stated in the contract of holy crap. That's a lot of stuff. IBM was serious about their demo discs. <laughs> Hopefully uh, these are still readable and we can check them out once we get this thing set up. Oh yeah, so we still got a couple other things here. This right here is the future. Well, rather future domain. It's manufactured exclusively for IBM. And this is the rather catchily named TMC-850 IBM 850. 850 IBM SCSI adapter option for IBM PS1 and PS2 and PC AT bus systems. Check out the way that this opens up. It looks like a shoe box or something for very long, large shoes. <laughs> In fact, I used to have size 15 feet for a bit. Like seriously, they were 15 and then they like shrunk. But anyway, lost a bunch of weight. My feet shrank. But the boxes for the shoes are about this big. What's in here? Got a SCSI cable package. Mm, yep, that's that's literally a SCSI cable in a package. Ah, we got the adapter card. Plug and play. And yeah, that has already been installed in the machine. Got some substantial stuff right here. We got a, a terminator as well as the connector for the SCSI cable. Plugs in the back of the computer right there. And that plugs into this or whatever else. I'd love to get a working Bernoulli disc to plug up to this thing. It's the one I covered years ago in Oddware. Never worked. All right, so we got some software here. I'm assuming this will just be like SCSI drivers. Uh, option diskette, yeah, pretty much. Notice, for installation of stuff, you got some problems, potentially. Hmm. Uh, warranty information, we got the... Uh, manual here with the pre-punched holes to plug into your binder if you have one. Which, uh, this one does not. I'm kind of sad about that. The documentation for a lot of IBM machines came in binders still, three-ring binders. I'm assuming most of the PS2s didn't, or I don't know, at least this one doesn't. And while this one is not a micro-channel uh, architecture machine, I will be talking about the whole micro-channel kerfuffle whenever I do a video about these machines and the rest of the PS2 line in general, because that is a fascinating story of failure. On the other hand, yeah, that is one of the things that is rather appealing about the Model 25 and 30. Easier upgrades. All right, so yeah, I'm not gonna... Uh, well, I, actually, I kind of might need to install it if DOS is installed to this drive and it doesn't do the... Eh... Uh, Let's just open the mouse for now, see what else we need to do here. Yeah. IBM Personal System 2 mouse, not for resale. Uh, this is cool to have new in the box. I'm not a huge fan of this mouse, personally, <laughs> but it's still cool to have, especially brand new. So we have uh, some more documentation stuff. I feel a disc in there, I guess, for the mouse. Yeah, mouse program diskette, as well as installation and cleaning instructions. Yep. Don't forget to clean your mouse balls. Another protective cardboard backing there. Uh, there we go, mouse program diskette. <laughs> installing the mouse, plug it in. There you go. And installing the mouse program. Uh, install it. Oh, and, and, and cleaning, good. Turn it off, disconnect the mouse. Who did that? Unlock the retainer, wash the ball in warm soapy water, and dry it well. Wipe the mouse and the retainer with a damp cloth, Install the ball and retainer. Lock the retainer by moving in the ops direct. Blah, 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 and connect it again. Good times. Oh. Well, that, that's just a sight to behold. Oh, yeah. Did you see that dust coming off of there? It's, it's like manufacturing dust or something. Oh, wow. Hmm. That smells really good. <laughs> like brand new rubber and plastic, you know, kind of a new car smell. I don't want to smell too hard because I don't know what that, that dust is. Um, but anyway, a very lovely example. I mean, it should be, it's brand new. Okay. Not that we need to clean the ball, but I just look how clean my ball is. <laughs> That's a satisfying little click. All right, time to get all this stuff set up and working. And yeah, I probably should have tested it back when I got it. 
forever ago, but I wanted to preserve my initial reactions to unboxing this thing for, you know, YouTuber reasons. So if it doesn't work, I'll have to time travel and get a refund. Ooh. So, uh, I'm going to power it on before plugging in the SCSI drive first, just to see what we get. Mouse pad. Okay, which one is the mouse? <laughs> it doesn't actually say, it just says one and two. All right, so according to the manual, it looks like mouse goes into port number two. And the keyboard will go into uh, port number one. There we go. And last but not least, that delightful SSK. And the amusing thing really about this, I'm sure I'll mention it in my later video, but yeah. The amusing thing is that this was a cost saving, like more affordable, cheaper keyboard than the full sized Model M that was available. And nowadays it's very much the opposite. Like I said earlier, this is uh, quite the collectible. All right, let's use this mother Everything should be ready to go. Let's turn it on. <laughs> awesome. So it's testing the RAM there, getting up to the full 640K. All right, so that's where it would need the system or startup diskette because DOS is installed on that SCSI hard drive over there. Uh, but let's just go ahead and try that. So yes, much like the IBM AT that I did an unboxing a while back, this did not come with an operating system built into it or uh, even on the hard drive that had to be installed. Like if you got the hard drive as an option, but this is the startup diskette. So this should let us do things. All right. Starter Diskette, 1987. So here's where we can do all of our diagnostic stuff. Uh, system checkout, format diskette, copy diskette, set the date and time. Let us set the date and time. So it is 1727 and <laughs> 27 seconds, something like that. And what is today? Uh, 2018. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Let's do the system checkout just because we can. It's got some packaging dust on here still. 640K memory, a keyboard, a display, a diskette drive, zzz, parallel and serial port and a mouse. That is correct, I guess, because it also has that SCSI drive in there. I'm, you know, yeah. Another interesting thing though, that it mentioned display just very vaguely. This uses MCGA, it's not VGA or anything like that. And this is the monochrome version of it. I, I think, I'm not entirely sure how that works because this is a monochrome screen, but MCGA could also do what was effectively like a VGA, but it wasn't, so it could do color. I, I, I'm wondering if this had a color monitor attached, if it could do color. I, I'm assuming it probably would. I guess it's just an MCGA card that's outputting black and white. Which shape is my main enter key? Uh, that would be number one. Yay, testing for the typing. Is the screen correct? Yeah, the screen is correct for all the characters. Yes, 80 characters, uh, that is correct. Yep, 40, 40, uh, dark gray, gray and white. Awesome. This is a very soft screen I'm just noticing as well. It makes these gradients look friggin' great, but it's very soft. This is, this is not a very low dot pitch or anything like that. It doesn't appear to be 640 by 200 graphics, sweet. 640 by 480. So yeah, there's MCGA in monochrome. It's just, that's a wild thing to me. No, I don't wanna, darn thing is getting very uh, up in arms about wanting to format a disc there. All right, so cool, we'll get a test of the PS2 mouse right here. You can see the little mouse cursor moving around. Yeah, so everything's fine. Which it should be, this thing is brand new. All right, I'm really curious to try out some of those things from the software sampler. And I'm going to assume that these are all bootable programs. So we've got personal productivity programs up first. Non-system disk. Well, that's, oh, literally step one. 
load DOS. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, this does not appear to have ever been used. That's great. Scuzzy right there into the card that I I do not know <laughs> if it's configured to read from it or not. I mean, I'm assuming that it is, considering the seller supposedly set it up to work with this drive. And we gotta terminate the empty port in the back because we're not daisy chaining anything. It's just this guy right here. Okay, I'm assuming we're gonna turn this on first. Yep. Ooh. That hard drive is much louder than the actual machine, which makes sense. <laughs> the fan is not super substantial in the PS2 itself, but that drive. That thing is speeding up something fierce. Hey, starting MS-DOS. So that answers that question. We are ready to go. Oh. All right, so around 150 megs. That's pretty great. Not a whole lot of free conventional memory there, but that's okay. Uh, let's get that productivity programs disk up and running. Hmm. What's all this then? Install. Uh, yeah, I guess fine. What is it copying them to? It's just copying to itself. Don't do that. All right, so apparently we're not supposed to do that. We're just supposed to run this G program. Uh, what, what's on? Yeah, phone directory organizer, introductory. Okay, so it's that group of stuff. Ah, so this is a very, very simple looking menu. Introductory editor. Oh, good. That is a very introductory editor, all right. Yeah, this is not basic. I just, I don't know what else to type. Uh, yeah, let's get out of here. Let's try the PC checkbook. We can set up an account. Oh, wow, this looks boring. I will definitely be playing around with these programs later, but I... What is this? PC print. You can print a file, edit fonts, printer parameters. Well, we don't have one installed. Sorry about that, Gary Dix but we don't actually have a printer, so let's just get out of here. Uh, let's try one of the more interesting disks, which is either one of them. All right, got education and entertainment. We'll leave the best for last, well, presumably the best. And we'll go to education, which, hey, why not? It's edutainment month here in LGR as I'm filming this. Don't actually know when this video will go up. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to just type G, so. Oh, I see uh, educational looking things. Awesome, education programs. All right, sweet. So we got these United States, Matrix Madness, Electronic Grammar, Algebra Skills. Let's try these United States. Oh. This is already super charming. <laughs> oh, this is, this is great, man. PC speaker. Okay, let's try it. My name is LGR. Oh, there's no second name. Should we play the comparisons game or the facts game? Let's go with facts. I don't want to compare United States things. That sounds stressful. Uh, let's see, abbreviations, name, capital, metropolitan. Oh, good grief, I don't know. Let's just go with names. Oh, good. Oops. I should have looked at what I typed. West Virginia. Yay. Hmm. It looks like it's meant for color. <laughs> it's not displaying the C's. Rhode Island. What? Oh, that, yeah, that's Delaware. Yay. Yeah, all right. Okay, Matrix Madness. What is this? Something, something Morpheus quote. Oh. Uh, I don't know about this, man, but we'll look at a demo. Oh, this looks positively atrocious. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that is actually even showing things correctly because these games seem to be, at least so far, meant for 
color screens. <laughs> Maybe there's a way to change that in the options somewhere, but yeah. I like the music. Yeah, this is definitely meant for color. That's just, it's barely showing up, which is fascinating. That's one thing I was wondering about with this particular unit. But now I know. <laughs> it will just try to display stuff, whether or not it should. And it just puts it in monochrome. So if it's not optimized for it, that's just too bad. Circles and triangles. <laughs> Circles. Is that not the most boring screen to start a game you've ever seen? The radius of a circle is 14, then the circumference is 28. Yay! The diameter of a circle is 1, then the circumference is... Wow, this is, uh... Let's get out of here. And lastly, the entertainment programs. Let's hope they're actually entertaining. Uh, let's see, we got Verso, Solitaire. I want to try Solitaire. I was curious as soon as I read that it came with Solitaire. Hope this uses a mouse. None of these have so far, which makes sense. These didn't come with a mouse by default. Okay, so this is nice. We can at least try these different things here. Okay, well, that's that works. Monochrome display attached to color adapter, which this is. Turn one, single pass. That's an interesting way of displaying the stacks of cards there. <laughs> All right, how do we control this? This is definitely not mouse controlled. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, this was, a, this was an option. So it kind of makes sense that these aren't made to use a mouse. Then again, I haven't actually installed the mouse, have I? I didn't turn on the mouse driver. Anyway, let's figure this out. Ah, crap, that, that's redealing everything. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, Okay, so you press the letter, and it just, it just does whatever it needs to do whenever you press the letter. Well, that's really simple. So in theory, you could just be like, just press every letter, and then see if something works. <laughs> okay, well, that's the most limited version of Solitaire I've ever seen. Let's see what Verso is. Verso, play a one-player game. LGR. Oh, reversey. Oh, fun. Done with that. Freddy's Rescue Roundup. Let's try that. Rescue some Freddy. How pleasant. Oh. This appears to be meant for color as well, because I can't see crap. It's a very Load Runner-esque thing, though. Aha! That's much better. There we go. Whoa, that just teleports you to another level entirely. This is interesting. I've never heard of this <laughs> particular uh, load runner type thing. All right, that's cool. That's the most like game-like game so far. I kind of like that. Blackjack, yes, please. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the black and white thing. Mmm, Las Vegas Strip. Sure, why not? Sure, fine. Uh, my max bet is 40, apparently. Oh, yeah, well, I have 40 bucks, so. Oh, great. So we got 12. I pressed the wrong button and I won, so that's good. Place a bet of 80. Yeah. Ooh, I got 17. Mm, I'm gonna stay. 
because that's risky. Well, I lost. Word seeking. Copyright International Business Machines Corporation. Look how official that looks. I do like the way that they've designed that logo though. Type or change words. Uh, so is this like edutainment Newcomb? Yeah, okay, let's just go with that. So yeah, it's making a word search or something or like a crossword puzzle. Not really sure yet. Play the game. What? Oh, it, yeah, it's, it's literally making a word search. Insert and enter. Wow, that is a lot of noise. Well, I've had enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have Kaleidoscope, which uh, that doesn't sound like the kind of thing you want to run on a monochrome display, if I'm honest, but maybe it'll be really surprising. Nope. Nope, you can't see crap. And I don't even know how to, how to exit out of here. Oh, okay, well, I can kind of see that. That's neat. This would probably be pretty cool if it was in color. I'm gonna have to try that out sometime. How do I get out of here? Disk drive is just freaking out, so we're gonna... We're gonna restart the computer. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, anyway, this is the IBM Model 25, the Personal System 2, which will be making another appearance sometime in the future. Um, thanks for checking out this particular computer with me as I'm setting it up for the very first time. I'm really curious to try some different stuff on here. You know, we're gonna wanna run like Windows and other games and things just to see how they are on like a monochrome monitor that actually has MCGA underneath. I think that's neat. And I just think that these systems are neat anyway. So hopefully you found at least some enjoyment from this completely incoherent video. <laughs> <laughs> when you see it again, it will be accompanied by actual research and effort <laughs> and a script. Anyway. And if you did like this video, despite the lack of script and coherence, I do this kind of thing every so often, just sort of sitting back and relaxing with an old computer and some software, seeing what happens. Most of the time, though, it is much more structured. So yeah, stay tuned for more of that coming soon. New videos every Monday and Friday here on LGR. And as always, thank you for watching.